everyone how is everybody doing today i hope everybody's week is going very well i'm sorry y'all i had to take a mini break i normally post like two videos a week but i had to take a break like it was just too much going on in my real life and then next thing you know i go on social media and it's all this unnecessary hate and don't get me wrong i have thick skin i could take the hate but sometimes I do need a break because at the end of the day, I am human. So this is going to be an episode where I'm not really showing my face today because I just got, I'm really stressed and it's just, I didn't feel like getting ready. But, you know, I know you guys missed this face. So I'm going to just put up a couple videos for you so you could see because I know you guys just, I know I'm breathtaking, aren't I? Look at this dark skin queen just giving you the girls, giving the girls what the girls need. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> I know, isn't she? Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She's fabulous. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but anyways. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is Jaden Alexis and Blueface. So I saw a video this week and Jaden Alexis got mad at Blueface because he said he likes Ebony and for those who are unaware, Ebony is a black woman and a black man having intercourse. And he said that's his favorite type of And that made Jaden Alexis feel away. And I want to play the clip for y'all so we could talk about it. But she was pressed. She was very pressed. And I'm not surprised at her reaction. But let's get into it. Hold up. Uh, Ebony Oh, you know what baddiehump.com is? Baddiehump.com? What you like? Um, Me? Yeah, what kind of answer is Like, that? asking them. Why'd you say that? Because it's like, I can't, like. You want to know what the fuck I like? No, no, no. I know, I know, you, I know like? you like big black cop strap ons with chicks and, and dykes and dykes and chicks. I know what I you like, okay? I but, like dykes and dykes and chicks. but me personally, no. like, it's hard for me to watch, like, other races have. Intercourse. I think you should shut the fuck up. Alright, uh, you want the mic? No, I'm just what, saying. What, what, no, 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 wait. No, Tell us what type said, you like. I would have just said I watch our tapes. I wouldn't have told everybody. Okay, to which type you like, though? I don't worry about it. What type you like? I'm, I'm logging off. Well, there you have it, folks. That's another mad preference. Getting mad because a black man like his own. And you know, what's funny to me is... Jaden is always saying the N-word and claiming that she's black. And let me tell y'all right now, this girl is not a black woman, okay? Her grandmother is black. So that means she is not 50% or more black, which means she is not a black woman. But she loves to claim her blackness when she want to say the N-word and when she want that big black deek. But then when her man says he like ebony, she didn't resonate with that. She didn't categorize herself as an ebony princess. Because she know deep down she is not a black woman. And this is a pattern I see with a lot of preferences. Especially of the Latin X background. They will go for black men. And then they will get mad when a black man shows love to a black woman. As if it's a crime. Because a lot of these non-black women that get with black men assume that the black men they're getting with hate black women. There are colorist black men who strictly date out and they don't like black women at all. But there are black men out here who date Latinas, date Chinese women, date Indian women, and date black women at the same time. And them dating out doesn't mean that they hate black women. They just open up their options to everybody. But because majority of black men who date out are colorist or texturist or featurist, a lot of these non-black women assume that if they're getting with a black man, they hate black women. And when they see that that black man actually likes black women, they get mad. And they show their ass. And they show their internalized racism. You see how mad she got? She said, what type of answer is that? 
Like it's a crime for a black man to say he likes watching black <laughs> Excuse me, sis. She was expecting him to say he likes mixed race <laughs> what, what, what the fuck were you expecting him to say? That is a black man. That man got a black ass mom. So it was just funny to me how she loves to claim that she's black and she loves to say the N word. But then when her man finally says he likes ebony princesses, she doesn't resonate with it. And suddenly she doesn't categorize herself as black. Now she feels away. And I know that hurt her little ego because she was expecting him to put down a black woman to uplift her. That's what she was expecting. She was expecting him to say, oh, you know, I like watching the Latina princesses hop on a black dick. She was expecting him to say that shit. She was expecting him to say, yeah, no, I don't really like watching black women. Like, I, I know exactly what she was expecting him to say. And that's why she was so shocked at that answer. And I don't know if y'all saw, but when she went on an interview with Jason Lee and he was talking about how he got head from Megan Thee Stallion, she almost reacted the same way. It like made her want to throw up. You know, like the thought of Blueface being with a black woman. And I mean like an ebony princess, you know, not a light skinned black woman like Krishan, like a black woman that it made her want to throw up. And honestly, I'm not surprised. And I wouldn't be surprised if she real life don't like black women. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I wouldn't be surprised if she's one of those Latinas that talk shit about black women and act like she's better than us because there's a lot like that. Okay. Remember Sin Santana talking and bragging about, oh, yeah, you know, black men, they just love us Spanish guys. She was trying to put down black women to uplift Latinas because Joe Budden was dating her. And then come to find out Joe Budden cheated on her with a dark skinned woman. He either cheated or he left one of the two. But I know when they broke up, he was on a date with a whole dark skin model that was way more prettier than Sin Santana. And I know she was pressed. Because you see, these women, they think that they're better than black women. And they real life do not like us. And it gives them an ego boost when they get with a black man who will openly say that they don't like black women. And they will go out of their way to date outside of their race. So they don't have to date a black woman. And when they see black men show love to their own, it, it makes them want to throw up. Because now they don't feel like the chosen one. Now they don't feel special anymore. So, and I don't even hate Jaden like that. You know, I like the song Barbie. I'm a bad little bitch and I'm slipped like a Barbie. Hips, lips, ass in a cutter. I'm a spade motherfucker. Hello, motherfucker. Hello, motherfucker. You know, I like that song. And, you know, I do think she gets like a lot of hate that is kind of unnecessary due to the whole krishan situation and i don't think that she's completely ugly either i don't think that you know i don't think she's like internet pretty you know she's not ig model pretty but i don't think she's ugly you know you know so i don't hate the girl but this was very telling her reaction to this was very telling miss ma'am miss 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 i'm a latina but i like to say the n-word yeah i'm a i'm a latina but i like black deke it was it was very telling. So, yeah. But um <clears throat> let's get into the next topic. <laughs> let's get into the next topic. So, the next thing I want to talk about is Miss Natalie Nunn. Now, Natalie, ugh, my gosh. First of all, we we have her to blame for baddies existing, okay? And I'm not gonna lie. 
I do watch baddies currently right now. Only because my girl T is on there. I don't know if y'all know, hi, my name's T, but I've been following her since she was famous back in the day on Vine. So when I saw that she was going to be on that show, I wanted to see her do her thing. And I knew she wasn't going to be into the ghetto activities either. And I wanted to see a girl who wasn't going to be acting like the stereotype on there. And I'm not going to lie. When I'm watching baddies, Natalie is the root of all evil on that show. She's like one of those messy girls who start the BS and then act like she ain't start nothing. You know what I'm saying? She'll instigate stuff and then step back and let the other bitches fight it out. You know, Natalie is very messy. Okay? Like, very messy. 90% of the fights that go on on baddies is because she stirred the pot. For real. And they bullied my girl T on there. They really did. Because T came on there with good energy She's the only girl on there who's a real bad bitch. For real, for real. And she wasn't looking to fight nobody. But people just kept trying to fight her for no reason. Literally, for no reason. And she had to defend herself. And it was really sad to witness that. And there's a lot of bullying that's going on on that show. Honestly, and it's disgusting. So I hope they learn that the way they've been running the show is not going to fly anymore because people are catching on to the fact that it's just stupid. The beefs come from stupid stuff and it looks like y'all are just targeting and bullying people for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Love and hip hop. Yeah. You know, they would throw cups at each other here and there and, you know, try to fight each other, but security would always get in the way before it got crazy and the beefs actually were behind something. You know, there was a storyline. On Zeus, on baddies, it's not like that. They will start fighting you because you turned around and they thought you looked at her weird. And they'll literally start throwing hands because you breathe wrong. I swear to God, like, they will literally start looking, beating, they will start beating you up because they feel like you're breathing incorrectly. They feel like you should breathe on an eight count and you breathe in on a 16 count or something. And they want to fight you because of that. So the show is very unhinged and it's honestly ignorant as hell. And yeah, I hope they learn that a real baddie doesn't just get into fights just because. Okay. If you're going to call the show baddies, then bring baddie energy. Don't be having girls fight just because somebody looked at another person the wrong way. That's not what baddies do. Baddies uplift each other. Baddies get to the bag. Baddies are not messy. Baddies don't gossip about other baddies. That's that's not that gives insecure. That gives bummy. Natalie, okay? So, you and your team need to get together. Y'all need to get in the motherfucking studio or wherever y'all meet and figure something out and change the plot of that show because the name doesn't live up to what the show gives. It don't give baddies. It gives bullies and bummies. Okay. But enough about my Natalie rant anyways. That's not even what I wanted to talk about. I just needed to rant real quick because it's like, girl. But let's get into what Natalie got into this week. So, Natalie went to a restaurant, okay, and they refused to serve her. They kicked her out, pretty much. And she made a video about it, saying that she was going to file a lawsuit because she felt like it was discrimination. She was saying that they turned her away because they don't like Zeus Network and they don't like baddies. And they don't like black people, apparently. So I want to play the clip for y'all where she's talking about this. And then I'm going to get into my opinion because, girl, but let's get into it. Table reserved. And when I walked up, they said, anyone that's affiliated with the Zeus Network, we don't care. We don't like what you guys represent. We don't like your TV shows. I gave them my American Express card on file earlier to book a table. They said I could not come in because they don't like the black network that I work for. 
Who is the owner? Because he's not black. I so, Natalie, I hate to break it to you, girl, but if I had a restaurant, I would kick you the fuck out, too, as a black woman. Okay? I think 90% of the black community would not let you in our establishment. Okay? You get on national TV breaking into fights in public places like there is no tomorrow. You go into clubs, getting into fights, throwing cups at people, breaking stuff. And you talk crap on establishments too, okay? Because I was watching baddies and when they were in Philly... They were talking bad about a popular club in Philly called Noto, okay? And I go to that club a lot. I actually know the vice president of that club. And I know a few friends who work there. And that club is one of the best clubs in Philly. And they had the nerve to get on national TV and say Noto was a horrible club. When really they were probably misbehaving. And Noto said, we not, we not going for that shit, okay? This is... An establishment that makes a lot of money. We're not risking it for a bunch of girls who don't know how to behave and act like grown ass babies. So Natalie, you tried to make this a race thing by saying the person didn't like the black network that you work with. And I'm here to tell you. I don't think that person said they don't like the black network that you work for. I doubt it. I doubt they said that. I think you said that because you wanted to get sympathy from the public. So you wanted to pull the race card. When in reality, the owner probably said he's not with that ghetto hood rat shit that you be into. And he probably, he or she probably invested a lot of money into their establishment. And they're not going to risk a grown ass baby coming in. And ruining their reputation and what they built because you want to get into a fight over some dumb shit on social media. That's why they turned you away. They turned you away because you don't act like a civil human being. You act like a child in public places. You get into fights in public places. You break glass. You throw things. And nobody wants to have that in their establishment. People want a peaceful experience. And I'm looking right outside of this club. Excuse me. And I'm looking right outside of this restaurant right now. And it looks fancy. It looks fancy. Okay. It looks like there's a lot of people with big bucks who come in there. And I'm sure they do not want to risk losing customers and clientele because some hood rat shit just ended up popping off in their restaurant because they allowed Natalie Nunn from Baddies to eat there. So yeah, he refused to serve you, girl. I would have refused to serve you too. I would have kicked you the fuck out and who gonna stop me? Because guess what? You over here talking about, oh, I'm gonna file a lawsuit. Miss ma'am, it is legal to refuse to serve people. It is legal. So that establishment is not going to get in trouble for refusing to serve you, especially when they have evidence of you literally breaking out into fights on national TV. The judge is going to look at this case and throw it the fuck out because they're going to be like, girl, you act like this in public places and you think somebody finna invite you into the restaurant? <laughs> Come on now. So please. And this is why I always say that hood rat ghetto shit where you want to be breaking into fights just cause only works on baddies. In the real world, nobody's going for that shit. And that's why you see most of the girls on baddies can't get booked anywhere else. They have to stay on Zeus Network and stay on baddies to get a bag. 
because no one else is booking them. Because no one wants to book a bunch of hood rats who are about to get into a fight because you got into a disagreement with them. No one's doing that. They tried it with Krishan and guess what happened? She ended up punching somebody or something at Tamar's show. So. In the real world, people don't be going for that hood rat shit. You have to behave like a civil human being. Okay, Natalie? And you're a grown ass woman. I think you're the age of my mom. Like you're damn near like 30 or 40 or some shit. So you breaking into fights and starting all this drama, like it's really above your age, okay? You should be a way more mature than that. So I'm seriously not surprised that they kicked you out. And I think you should learn something from this. Instead of trying to play the blame game and the race card, take it as a lesson to change your behavior for the better. Because that shit only works on baddies. It doesn't work in the real world. Okay? Whew. I'm sorry. She just, they just pissed me off. So I'm, <laughs> but um, let's get into the next topic. Okay. So this next topic is going to piss me off when I talk about it. I'm just going to let y'all know now. So there's a rapper named Gloss Up, right? Who was doing a podcast interview and she wanted to share her feelings about light-skinned men. And she straight up said, I don't like light-skinned men. Even though she has two light-skinned kids. And this pissed me off, okay? Because gloss up, First of all, she's actually a very good rapper. And I think that she should have had the hype that Glorilla had, in my opinion. I know they're friends. And in my opinion, I feel like Gloss Up is way more talented and her voice sounds way better. And I think she should have had Glorilla's hype. And I think part of that had to do with colorism, for real. Because she's way prettier than Glorilla, in my opinion. Way prettier. And she's a better rapper. But she's darker. Okay? And before Glorilla, you know, got her teeth fixed and got, you know, herself looking the way she looks now, she looked a hot mess. But y'all blew her up because that light skin privilege does a lot. It does a lot. Okay? So I was disappointed to see this coming from her because I feel like she should be doing more for herself music wise than being in the blogs for saying some dumb shit like this because the blogs don't post her for her music. We never see the blogs post gloss up for her music. But the minute she says some dumb shit like this, that's when they post her. And that's what they do with a lot of dark skinned women. They will only put us in the blogs and post us when we're acting a damn fool or being problematic or saying something controversial. But when we're putting up stats or when we have good rap skills and we're dropping music or when we look good, they don't post us. So I was really disappointed in her saying this because now the blogs are going to only post her when she says stupid problematic stuff. And I don't know if she has a team behind her or she's signed or what. But if she is signed, I guarantee you her team is probably going to tell her to start saying dumb shit in interviews so she could get buzz. And that's only going to hurt her in the end. So let's watch the clip where she's talking about this, but. Yeah. Oh, you fuck with light skinned niggas? No. Why not? I don't know. Why, why the fuck y'all don't like us no more? I don't even know how I got two light skinned kids. No. Them niggas is light skinned. <laughs> it's not funny. So, so you don't know? You, you just they just come to you? 
Nah, that shit was a mistake. How in the fuck was that a mistake? Easy. Type shit. Somebody was bragging on that nigga, and I fucked. So, the reason this pisses me off for numerous reasons. One, girl, you're a dark-skinned woman, okay? I'm sure you don't like it when niggas say, I don't date dark-skinned girls. I don't fuck with the dark skins, right? But it's okay for you to say that you don't like a light-skinned man. And this is the problem I have with a lot of black women, especially dark-skinned black women, because some of y'all are hypocrites. And this is why a lot of people don't take us serious when we talk about colorism. You cannot sit up here and complain about colorism affecting you as a dark-skinned woman and then turn around and say, you don't fuck with light-skinned niggas. And then the reasoning behind it is always some stereotype. Like, oh, them niggas is soft. I, I don't really fuck with light skins because they, they not strong enough. They not masculine enough. That's a problem. Because you don't like when people do it to you. You don't like when people call dark skinned women masculine or aggressive or ugly. But then you want to turn around and perpetuate colorist stereotypes onto light-skinned men and i honestly feel for light-skinned men because while you don't experience colorism from a systemic standpoint you do get negative pushback from it from a social standpoint i do think that a lot of black women repel light-skinned men for stupid reasons that are most of the time not true because let me tell you something, as a dark-skinned girl, I attract light-skinned men the most in the black community. I barely attract dark-skinned men. They normally are never checking for me, but light-skinned men are always checking for me. And these stereotypes y'all have about them being soft and being, you know, sassy and whatever y'all like to say these days is not true at all. Every light-skinned man I've fucked with or messed with or talk to appreciated my skin and was not a bitch like he really was not a bitch like he was a man he stood on his shit so I just think it's funny how dark-skinned women like to say stuff like that about light-skinned men and then turn around and hop on the protest about colorism when it comes to dark-skinned women. Y'all can't do that. Because then nobody's going to take us serious when we talk about colorism. It's hypocritical and it's disgusting. So, yeah, that disgusted me in itself. That disgusted me in itself. I I really dislike when black women do that towards light skinned men. I like it makes me want to it makes me want to throw up. I hate that. So don't come around me with comments like that because I'm gonna shut it down real quick. Okay. I I don't fuck with that at all, at all. So I hope she learned something from this. And my thing is. Okay, if you had a negative experience with one light-skinned man, that don't mean that you got to count out all light-skinned men. What if a black man got up on national TV and said, yeah, I don't fuck with black women because a black girl broke my heart in third grade. How would you look at him? You would be like, nigga, what the fuck? So don't, don't do that to them. Don't do that to light-skinned men. Don't do that to black men in general. It's cool if you want to open your options. That's fine. I've opened my options. I don't date black men exclusively. I date black men, white men, Asian men, Indian men, whatever. But never will I fix my lips and say that I'm done dating black men because I had a negative experience with black men. No. Because at the end of the day, not all black men are the same. And at the end of the day, you are a black woman. So it gives self-hate when you say you don't want to date your own race. I, I don't go for that. I don't go for that. Okay. So anyways, 
Anyways, anyways. Okay, so the next thing I want to get into is Miss Sukiana. Okay, so Sukiana's baby dad was in a podcast interview, and he had a few things to say about Sukiana and her role in her children's lives. So he was basically saying that, you know, for the first three years of their kids' lives, she wasn't present. And what pissed me off about this video was that people in the comments were coming for him for speaking out about it. And they were making excuses for Sukiana. I see a bunch of black women talking about sounds like you don't want to deal with your kids sounds like you're mad because you have to raise your kids spoken like a true deadbeat and i'm looking at y'all like please um so you mean to tell me it's okay for black women to be deadbeats but it's not okay for black men to be deadbeats because i don't like that double standard and sometimes black women, I love y'all, but I'm going to call you out when you're wrong. Because I want the best for y'all. And sometimes y'all have this weird double standard where y'all make excuses for black women who do stupid stuff. And you wouldn't make those same excuses for a black man. I see it with Krishan and Blueface all the time. And now y'all are doing this with Sukiana and her baby dad. Because if the roles were reversed. And Sukiana was on an interview saying that her baby dad wasn't present for the first three years of her children's lives. And she had to take care of them alone and raise them alone. Black woman would be in the comments talking about, oh my God. He's a deadbeat. He ain't shit. Fuck that nigga. Fuck niggas. They, they don't like to take care of their kids. They always be in deadbeats. But now that a black man is saying that a black woman is being a deadbeat. Oh, well. Suki had to go out and get the money. You just mad because you don't want to raise your own kids. What? I don't know if you guys forgot. But both parents are needed in the home. That kid is not going to have the best future when he's being raised by a single mom or a single dad. And what we want for the black community is to have more families where both parents are in the home. But if y'all just about to be out here making excuses for black women being deadbeats then we're still going to run into the same situation of broken homes. So stop fueling that stupidity and that ignorance. There is nothing wrong with what this man said, but y'all sitting up here making excuses for Sukiyana and coming for this man. Because he said that he's going to do his part as a father regardless. That's a good thing. A lot of y'all got baby dads who only show up when they want that coochie. And they don't do shit for your kids. A lot of y'all got baby dads who disappear for like five years and don't see your damn kids. But we got a black man up here who's saying, I'm going to do my part as a father and take care of my kids. I just ask that their mother is also there too because a child needs his mother. And y'all sitting up here bashing this man for saying that. Y'all got to do better, black women, okay? Stop making excuses for black women like Sukiana and Krishan and all these girls who have children while they're still hood rat bitches who are into childish activities. Because now they're creating dysfunctional lifestyles for those children, those black children, those black children that are the future okay tired of that bullshit so that just pissed me off that all y'all were like over here in these comments like 
bashing him and making excuses for Sukiana because you like her and you think she's funny. Ha ha, Kiki. Yeah, she's cool. She's funny. But um, yeah, you are a deadbeat. Y'all do that all the time. Every time y'all like somebody or they're funny, y'all make excuses for them and you act like they can't do no wrong. Let me tell you something. The funniest people I've ever met in my life be doing the grimiest shit sometimes. Just because they're funny and they know how to make you laugh. That don't mean that they're a perfect person and everything they do just can slide without no accountability. No. Not over here. I'm not doing that. So. <laughs> as a black woman, I'm holding Sukiana accountable. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You should have never dismissed your baby dad and your kids like that. Hell no. But let's get into the next topic. Okay, so this next topic, right, is about Saucy Santana. So Saucy Santana recently spoke on his fears of having a gay son. And I wanted to get into this because that was very deep. That was extremely deep. And honestly, um, I have mixed feelings about this because one, I understand where he's coming from. I do, you know, um, it's not easy being a gay black man. It's not, I, I done seen a lot. Okay. Our community is very homophobic. Uh, when I went to school, being an openly gay black man was like, it was the equivalent of being a black kid in the 1940s. Like, I saw a lot of gay kids who got beat up bad, bad, unprovoked. Like, they they would not do anything to anybody. They would mind their own business and... People would come into school and literally beat the shit out of them every five seconds. I, I went to an all black school at one point and I saw how openly gay children got treated. One time, like a kid came in with his nails done and he got beat up like bad. And I never saw him again. Like he had to go to a different school because he was getting bullied so bad. So I understand what he's talking about, you know? It's not easy being a gay black man. And I know we're more accepting of it now. Thanks to people like Saucy Santana for being a rapper and spreading more awareness about it and making more black men feel comfortable to live in their true colors. But it wasn't always like this. It was really, really bad a few years ago where people in our community just they did not like feminine black men at all and you it's still bad now like you will still get beat up and stuff but back then it was really really bad so I understand where he's coming from and I think that's something that our community needs to unpack and that's something that we really need to heal from because there's no reason why you should just be beating up a gay black man just because if he's minding his business and he's not raping anybody there is no reason for you to beat him up or throw him into lockers or take his life because that also happens too. There, there's no reason for all of that. On the flip side though, you can't control who your kids are. You can't. Okay? I'm a dark-skinned woman and... I could end up having a dark skinned child. Okay. Like if I end up marrying a black man, I most definitely will have at least the brown skin or a dark skinned girl. And I can't control that. I can't control that my daughter is going to be black. And that's not saying that I hate being a dark skinned woman, but I do know that if I do have a dark skinned daughter, she's going to go through what I went through. When I was a kid. 
if I have a black daughter, she's going to go through what I go through in life as a black woman. And it is sad to think about and it's hard to think about because you want your children to have better than what you have. You want your children to have a better experience in life than what you had. But at the end of the day, you can't control it. So all you can do is raise your children to adjust to how the world receives them. So I understand where he's coming from. But at the same time, I think the best thing for him to do is raise his gay child to adjust in the world that's homophobic. And teach his gay child how to move around in a world that's homophobic. That's the best thing you can do because you can't control whether your kid comes out gay or straight. You just can't. So, unfortunately. But um, I'm sure he will love his child regardless. You know, he didn't say that he's homophobic and his reasoning was definitely not because he hates gay people. It wasn't that. So, you know... It's not like we have a situation on our hands where we have to be fearful of another black child being mistreated. It's not one of those. So that's very good to hear. And that's very good to think about at the same time. So, you know, yeah, but that that was very deep. That, that was very deep. And I'm actually glad that he shed a light on that publicly because I think our community does need a wake up call when it comes to the homophobia and transphobia that goes on for sure. And I think, honestly, Saucy Santana should speak up more about his experiences as a gay man. Honestly, I think a lot of people would resonate with him and a lot of people would love to hear him speak about it. But I know it's not easy to talk about it because it's a very heavy topic. So no pressure. But, you know, it wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt. Okay, so this next topic made my head hurt. So there was a black woman on the podcast, Eight at the Table. And by the way, I was also on Eight at the Table. So if you want to go see me and my episode on Eight at the Table, I was talking about dating outside of my race as a dark-skinned black woman. And I'm sure a lot of you would love to see what I had to say about that. So y'all could definitely go check it out. Um, It's somewhere there. I think if you type in a Barbie Life 2.0, Eight at the Table, you'll find it. So yeah, but... She basically was talking about how she gets turned off when men are polite to her. And she didn't realize that she was so used to toxic patterns to the point where a man being polite to her felt weird. So let's 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 just watch the clip. Let's just watch the clip cuz she was ugh, you gonna on the first date and when I opened the door, my man was at my front door. And I was like, oh, like, right. <laughs> and then he hit me with the Rico. He pulled the flowers out. And I was like, wow, this is different. Right. So I'm not even paying attention. I brush past this trying to walk down the steps and get to the door. Right. Because I'm not paying attention. I'm just so not used to it. And it just hasn't like I've just didn't have a lot of practice. He opened my car door. I get inside. He closed the door. I immediately went to my group chat. It's weird. <laughs> Did you say he opened your car door? Opened- High five. No, High five. And you see, this is why I can't stand some black women like this. Because they make all black women look bad in the dating scene. Okay, she reminds me of the Cheesecake Factory girl. Okay. And I see a lot of people in the comments, especially men, talking about, oh, Black women are unbearable. They don't know what they want these days. They always talking about they have high standards, but they really want a man who treats them like trash. And I hope black women understand that when you get up on these podcasts and you say dumb shit like this, you're making all black women look bad. And you're giving black men an excuse to keep treating us like shit. And I think I speak for the whole black female community when i say we don't resonate with this bitch we don't okay bring me flowers love open the door for me please open the car door treat me like a princess i do not get weirded out by that at all that turns me on that gets my coochie juices flowing 
okay so this girl saying that it weirded her out and she texted her friend saying this guy is weird that's just a her thing it's not a black woman thing and i wish y'all would stop trying to make it a black woman thing when black women get on these podcasts and start saying dumb shit it's just a her thing she just need to go to therapy she got issues but i promise you majority of black women are not sitting up here calling niggas corny because they pay for dates and they open the door and they bring us flowers. A lot of us love that. So she's speaking for herself, okay? And I'm not just saying this because I feel this way. I was looking through the comments and there were plenty of black women saying, listen, speak for yourself, lady. Speak for yourself because I love those things. It, it was many black women who were disagreeing with her. So I just hope y'all know when y'all see black women get up on these podcasts and say stupid stuff. It's not a black woman thing as a collective. It's just them. They just need to go to therapy. It's not the collective. The collective are raising our standards and the collective do want to be courted and do want to be treated better. So don't listen to this dumb asshole. Okay. So the next topic I want to talk about is uh, this relationship coach. Okay. And she's the sprinkle sprinkle. I don't watch her videos faithfully, but I do see her clips on social media a lot. And I do love her. Okay. She be spitting that shit. And she basically said if she was 22, she would not be dating black men at all. And she said they're too feminine and they take long to get their shit together. So let, let's let take a look at what she had to say because I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, I were 22 today. I would not be dating black men at all. Be unless they were older. They'd have to be real old. <laughs> I, because... They're too feminine these days for me. I like masculine, go get them. I'm a pay for that baby type men, okay? Where you want to go on vacation type men. I, that's what I like. If I was 22 today, I wouldn't date black men. I'm sorry. Um, Y'all take too long to get y'all stuff together. Y'all want us to pay half the bills and sleep with you? No, can't do that. Well, I wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm not saying that other men are better than you. I'm just saying they're more ambitious. So, you know, she said this and a lot of black men were in their feelings. Okay. I was looking through the comments. I sent it to a few of my male black friends and they, they were bitter. They were like, fuck that bitch. She just mad. She just bitter. Right. And I am a black woman, you know, I'm a dark skinned 21 year old black woman. And I will tell you right now, she ain't lying. She is not lying. OK. A lot of black men in my age group are feminine as hell. As hell. They want to be the new women. They want you to get them roses. They want you to buy them purses. They want you to take them out on dates. They want you to go 50-50 with them so they can have a roommate instead of be a real man. So she's not wrong. The dating pool in the black community for my age group is scary. Because it's a lot of black women who got motion and a lot of black men in my age group who don't. It's a lot of black men in my age group who sit on their ass and don't do shit, but demand a lot of shit. And I think that when y'all see black women get online and say they're tired of settling and they're raising their standards, it's mostly black women in my age group. It's mostly black women who are under 25. There's no statistics on it yet because they just haven't done the research. But I'm sure if they did, it would come out that a lot of black men my age don't have their shit together. 
Because that's my experience. I, I see that a lot. And that's one of the reasons why I said I was going to open my options and date outside of my race. Because the choices of black men to choose from in my age group is, it's shitty. There's not that many black men who like dark skinned women in general in my age group. Because my age group is very colorist. Very colorist. You see them every single day talk about how they don't like dark skinned women because we aggressive and we masculine and we not cute. I be seeing them. Yeah, I be seeing the smasher pass stuff where they be passing up on the beautiful dark skinned girls. And then they be saying they want to smash the white girls and the light skinned girls. They they are colorists as hell in my age group. So it's not that many black men to choose from as a dark skinned girl. Because one, it's not that many black men who are on their shit in my age group. A lot of black men in my age group are not working towards a degree or not working towards a career or a future. They're just getting by. Honestly, they really are. That's like 90% of them. They really are just getting by, but they're not trying to have a secure future for themselves or anything. And I'm not saying that college is the answer for everybody. You know, trade school is a thing. But a lot of these black men don't even want to do that. So I, I get where she's coming from. I totally get where she's coming from. I totally get what she's saying. Because I am a dark skinned black 21 year old woman who dates within my age group. And it's it's a scary dating pool. Like I said, it's, it's a lot of black men who demand a lot but don't do a lot. And be community dick as well so yeah she she ain't saying nothing wrong she ain't saying nothing wrong and i think that before black men get in their feelings y'all need to listen to black women when we say this so y'all can improve yourselves because i feel like black men take it as an attack towards the collective when we say stuff like this you know, even black men who are on their shit take offense to it. I saw a bunch of black men in the comments talking about, oh, well, I'm on my shit. I have a degree. I have a house. I have a car. So I don't know what she talking about. And I'm like, sir, that's good for you. But not all black men are like that, especially in my age group. You're one of very few so instead of getting mad at this black woman for voicing the truth about what's going on in our community, how about you hold other black men accountable so they do better? So there's more black relationships and more black love. Because when y'all don't hold each other accountable, these black men just continue to act like bitches and they continue to act feminine. And that's only going to chase black women away from them. And at some point, we're going to see a lot of black women dating out. If y'all don't get your shit together. For real. So, stop taking it as an attack. Stop seeing it as, oh, this black woman just hates black men. That's not what it is. We wouldn't be voicing this to you guys if we hated you. If we really hated you... We wouldn't even bother wasting our breath trying to explain to you where you're wrong in certain areas or where you can do better. We would just stop fucking with y'all and go date out and leave it at that. But we don't do that. We constantly try to explain to you guys. We constantly try to talk to you guys and communicate with you so you understand where we're coming from. So you do better for us. Because at the end of the day, we want better for ourselves. And we want y'all. We do. A lot of black women want to be race loyal. A lot of us do. But it comes a time where enough is enough. And we can't keep wasting our breath on men who do not listen. 
So she ain't say nothing wrong. Black men in my age group under 25. Y'all need to do better. Y'all are too feminine. You are. A lot of stuff that y'all say now, your grandfather wouldn't dare. Some of your fathers wouldn't dare. So please. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the last topic that I want to get into is Steve Harvey. So Steve Harvey recently won the TV Icon Award. And he spent majority of his speech congratulating his beautiful wife who is a sexy black woman by the way and I hope a lot of black men look up to Steve Harvey because he's one of the most successful black men in our community and he is race loyal and he treats his black wife notice how I said wife and not baby mom he treats his black wife like a queen as he should and I think a lot of you black men spend your time looking up to these rappers who make their women baby moms and treat them like shit and dog them out and cheat on them and y'all don't pay attention to black men like Steve Harvey who uplift their queen and stay with her for years and constantly give her credit for being a good wife. This right here is what I call black love. Beautiful black love. And I think a lot of black men should take after Steve Harvey. He said half the shit y'all congratulating me for happened after I married this queen. And let me tell y'all something. A lot of you men think that it's cool to be a hoe. And it's cool to... Make a bunch of girls your baby moms and live that rapper lifestyle where you just out here being community dick and living your life in the club and blah, blah, blah. But it's nothing like having a partner who stands by you and who's really down for you. And being in a really healthy relationship where you both commit to each other and respect each other. Because as a man, when you find the right woman and you stick beside her and you treat her right, you will bring her peace. And in return, she will bring you success. You see, they're not going to tell you black men, but the key to success most of the time is having a strong woman by your side. I'm telling you right now. Wouldn't Nikki say that one time? Rock needed a Michelle, bitch. And Bill needed a motherfucking Hillary, bitch. Barack needed a motherfucking Michelle, bitch. And Clinton needed a motherfucking Hillary. Okay. Understand that. Please. Black men, please understand that. Okay. So these whole activities that you see these rappers doing, don't don't get into that. If you want to be really top tier, if you want to be number one, you you gonna you gonna need to follow after Steve Harvey's footsteps. You gonna have to follow after Barack Obama's footsteps. Those are men you should look up to. And watch how they treat their woman. How they talk about their wives. Okay. And shout out to Nicki Minaj. Because Pink Friday 2 is coming out already soon. Okay. Already soon. December 8th. Okay. That is a few days away. So I'm super excited. I know all the barbs are super excited and y'all know I'm a barb. Okay. So, you know, I'm excited, especially to hear my song, Big Difference. It's a big difference between me and you. I ain't nothing like you, you, you or you. Uh, but 
that's the end of this podcast episode. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys very soon. I'm going to be filming a lot of videos without my face showing because I'm just stressed right now. So I just don't even have the time to do my hair or nothing to look presentable in front of the camera for y'all. I'm sorry. So yeah, but I'm going to just put up, you know, a couple clips of myself because I know you guys miss this face. I know you miss this face. So let me just, you know, remind y'all, you know, because ooh. And look at that, look at that, look at that. Just look at that black goddess energy. You see, oh, child, oh, oh my God. I know, I know. I just look so, uh, oh, I look so edible. I look like a whole meal, honey. Oh my God. Oh my God. All right, I'm gonna stop. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys very soon. I hope you guys are staying safe. And I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for the support. Like when I told you guys that I needed a break, a lot of you were in my comments just sending a lot of support and love. And if I didn't reply to you, I'm sorry. I'm just overwhelmed a lot. But I didn't miss anything. I didn't miss your comments. I saw it and I appreciate all of you very, very much for sending me love and support. And you guys don't know how much I appreciate you. You guys are literally like my rock. I don't know what I would do without you guys. So thank you so, so much for just being amazing and being you like, ah, I just love you guys, but I will see you guys very soon and stay safe. Love you. Besos.